I'm on a bit of a mission today. I am going to see if I could dig up some of my old camcorder stuff from when I was a teenager. I think it might be in the garage. I don't know. I'm going to go look. Fair warning, it's pretty gross in here. Let's see if I could find that old camcorder. <sighs> Look at this beast. I can't remember the era I bought this, but I want to say it was probably 2001, maybe even earlier. I found a bunch of cassette tapes for a different camcorder. The second Haunted Wind Chimes tour in 2008 with the Mexican. Found a bag of old photos. Some of these is from my first hitchhiking experience. <laughs> Some of the photos I took while I was in New York. Who's that guy? So the last thing I found were a bunch of old hard drives that I'm gonna see what's on these guys. And um, yeah, it's all really dusty. I'm gonna go wash my hands. Okay, let's get this computer fired up. All right, let's look at this first. So the first storage device had audio files on it, including this gem. I went back out to the garage and found what it was recorded on, which is a Roland 24-bit Wave MP3 recorder R9. Now this. Hard drive one, it's like a archive. I, I don't know what the era is. It's probably like 2006 to 2008. It's bringing up a lot of feelings. It's, there's a lot of um, music, there's some video, there's some photographs. It's like unearthing a lot. I found some kind of gems, some songs that I had forgotten about, and I think I'm going to compile some of the ones that feel releasable and put it on my Bandcamp page. So, for those of you who don't know me, maybe you don't realize why this is bringing up a lot of feelings. Maybe some of you know me from my recent solo project. Maybe you know me from Haunted Wind Chimes. Maybe you know me from my punk rock band. Regardless, let me explain. It was 2005. I had just gone through my first real heartbreak. This person left me after basically nursing me back to health from a few previous years of being in and out of the hospital due to digestion issues. I was self-medicating, curled up on a rooftop with a bottle of whiskey, and I decided on my 22nd birthday that September, I was going to hitchhike to New York City. So that September, me and a few friends, a couple dogs loaded up in a 1969 Westphalia and we headed east. It's a long and lonesome road. The first city outside of Colorado we made it to was Lincoln, Nebraska. Any money that we had saved up was gone in a matter of days because the van we were traveling in needed constant repair. I played on the street daily and we made a few friends. We even befriended a local Jimmy John's owner who brought us bread and water daily. This was my first time away from home. Next we made it to Omaha, Nebraska, where I met some of the most amazing musicians and friends of mine to this day. It was at this point in our journey where I really started to see the American Dream unfold, and I started working on a song called The American Dream. After Omaha, Two out of my three friends headed home, while my best friend Mikey, his dog Freedom, and I continued east, this time without transportation, so we stuck our thumbs out and made our way. 
Well, let's talk about this now. Uh, Inea also has one of the best punk rock bands in Pueblo, Colorado. Everything is played here right now will lead you to believe that he's a, a sensitive kind of singer-songwriter type of guy. After Chicago, my best friend Mikey returned home and I continued east, this time to visit a friend who was now residing in Bloomington, Indiana. It was here and with my now brother-in-law, Opie, I met Paris for the very first time. Paris, Paris is a gentleman, a, a gentleman I met out in Bloomington, Indiana. A really good person. I actually uh, met him at a pool hall and ended up hooking up with him. He was a musician down there, beautiful voice, played the piano. He invited me over, I played the song for him and he kind of started crying. So, so this one will always be known as the song that made Paris cry. And it goes like this. Well, sometimes I get to thinking of the past And how we always said that our love would last My time in Bloomington, Indiana had come to a close. I had a mission. I had to get to New York. I rode the rails through the back countries of this great land, just like the heroes that had come before me. I arrived in New York. It was late. It was cold. And I was road-worn and tired. But I had accomplished what I set out to do. Things I never dreamed of. Things I never thought I could do because of my medical situation. Little did I know this would lay the groundwork for the next 15 years of my life. And I got to share that with my best friends, my family, my loved ones. In fact, 2020 may be the first time I don't travel since. But that's not what this is about. I suppose this is an entry about death. Let me explain. Yes. When I unboxed these hard drives and went down memory lane, I didn't realize how it was going to affect me. And it made me realize that I'm grieving. I'm grieving a former self. I'm grieving a former life that has come to an end. But that's okay. Endings are good. Endings create space for something new. She's the stark naked lady love meant her to be. Friends drift apart. Bands break up. Marriages come to an end. And death. Death's just a part of life. It was a good life. And I wouldn't change a thing. Well, maybe a couple things. Okay, something's really sucked. Oh, jeez. Check out this jam, though. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think of the truth as reality, and that you're